five developers challenged themselves to make a complete video game without communicating. So far we've made farming roguelikes, superhero simulators, real-time castle defenders, the list goes on. The question is what will it be this time around? All the devs will get together at the end of the video to discover and play the final creation. And suffice to say, the first devs can get a real shock when they discover how the project has evolved and mutated. Yo! So with that said, let's begin this project with developer number one. Hey everyone, I'm Dio from Cousins and I developed both FPS Engine and the Volatile Engine available on the Unity Asset Store. I also run a game development channel called Cousins. For this challenge, I decided to use FPS Engine and see what we can create in a limited amount of time. I opted for a high octane movement FPS game, so I enabled double jumps, wall run, and dashing. Since FPS Engine already handles shooting and the weapon mechanics, I created a few simple models and added them to the game. Next, I quickly designed four types of enemy. One of them is an explosive enemy that detonates when it gets close. Another one is a healing enemy that targets the enemy with the lowest health within a certain range. Additionally, I created two variants of a sniper enemy. After working on all of this, I thought it was pretty cool to allow the players to deflect enemy bullets using the melee attack as a part mechanic, which turned out to be quite fun to play around with. Moreover, I made sure that each enemy drops a random amount of coins on death, and I added a simple UI to display the in-game currency. But it didn't make sense to have a currency system without anything to spend it on. That's why I created a basic shop that the next developers could keep expanding if they wanted to. To add an extra layer of challenge, I implemented a timer. It's time you kill an enemy, you gain more time. So the more enemies you manage to take down, the more you will extend your remaining time. So this is everything I could make for my part. I am really excited about how it's looking so far, and I can't wait to see what the next developer creates with it. So good luck and see you next time. I'm going to make it my job to turn this test scene-ish playground into a game with a start, a finish, rules to follow, all that. Why not make this a roguelite? So I started off with super simple level generation. There is a list of corridors and a list of arenas that can spawn in at random. Some of these are arenas enter a lockdown sequence when the player enters, meaning you have to kill every enemy in that arena for the door to open. While this is very common for every room to have in roguelites, the gameplay here is obviously very movement shootery. Movement is a big thing, going fast is a big thing. If the player is constantly stopped in their tracks, that, that, then that just sucks! So I made the timer connected to the player's health bar. The player is constantly losing health, especially when they get hit, but it can be regained by killing enemies. This way the player has to juggle reaching the end of the stage as fast as possible and killing enemies along the way to extend their timer. Lockdown arenas are also a good way to make the player not skip past everything completely. But if you manage to beat the stage, you enter this other room. On our right we find that the shop made by the previous dev returns. Oh hey, welcome to our cozy little shop. My friend Gimbo told me he has an eye on you. He thinks you're great. Oh, here he comes now. Don't tell him I said anything, please. Awesome, thanks. Hello. Whoa, so, uh, anyways, on our left is something I know a lot of my Black Ops Zombies brethren out there will love. It's a mystery box. I thought it would be really neat to have one of these here. It fits perfectly with the randomness of the roguelites, and also with choice making. Sure, you can spend your coins on the specific upgrade you want, or you can gamble! Ayo! There's almost no time left for me, but I wanted to make sure the game's theme is at least somewhat interesting. The getting to live longer by killing enemies could be represented in such cool ways visually. You're an escaped lab experiment in need for blood. You're a hunted samurai, a, a cyber samurai. You can be the Grim Reaper who constantly needs new souls to survive. A, a cyber Grim Reaper? Originally, I added this beautiful piece of decorative graffiti, but I was told I'm not allowed to do that. Now, of course, I could just make a title screen and call the game Mech Zone Aftermath. You play as a robot collecting fuel from other robots. Two X. But instead, I wanted to do a little experiment. You see, I'm a bit of a master manipulator. What if I give the slightest hint? What if I simply add some robotic sound to these text pop-ups and leave it at that? Will it spiral into a robot aftermath setting? Probably not, but we'll see, I guess. Uh, anyways, after this video, come check out my channel where I work on my own games. It's pretty fun. All right, see you. Now, quick pause. If you also want to make video games and bring your imagination to life, we've created a course called Game the Rocket. This is a clear roadmap that will take you from complete beginner to a pro who can build, launch, and make money 
from his games on the world's largest online store, Steam. You'll learn how to make game art, code in C Sharp, design worlds, and even how to start your own YouTube channel so you can grow a following and begin marketing your work. We are constantly expanding the course and we're super excited for the next update. This expansion is being made in collaboration with the master of horror, Mizizizizz, and will teach you how to build your very own horror games, from designing and programming monsters to crafting claustrophobic, terrifying atmospheres. We've even got a mini free preview of the course which you can check out using the link in the description. And with that said, moving on to the next developer. When I opened up the Pass the Game Challenge, I found a very nice pew pew game. I could do all kinds of things like run and jump and double jump and hurt cubes and die, but everything was kind of bland, so I wanted to spruce it up a little. I decided to start with the cubes that were attacking us. Didn't feel right because I've never been attacked by cubes in real life before. I decided to turn them into animals. Here we have a pigeon. His name is Jimmy. I sculpted him with care, then I retoppled him, UV unwrapped him, and textured him. I skinned him and imported him, brought him to life, and I love him very much. Jimmy looked very handsome in the game, but he felt lonely, so I made him some friends. From his mesh, I made three, Rebecca, Steven, and Ashtray. Once Jimmy's friends were brought to life, I decided to give them a nice home to live in. I designed some walls, floors, trim, windows, and doors. Much better. The home still felt very basic, so I decided to add some standard home decor. With tables, picture frames, mushrooms, clouds, fraglets, boblings, shloops, freegles, flip blocks, and worms. I didn't get much time to do any coding, so I decided to sprinkle some comments around to encourage the next developers. Then I remembered we're not supposed to be communicating, so I deleted them. The game is looking a lot more normal and regular now, so I'm ready to pass it along to the next step. Hey everyone, I'm Johnny from the Turbo Mace Games YouTube channel. Over on my channel, I do all sorts of crazy ridiculous things with Unity's Data Orange Technology Stack, aka Dots. So I received this project with the FPS Engine asset already set up. I thought it was really cool that it had a bunch of nice features set up and ready to go right out of the box, like melee, dashing, and wall running. But to be honest, all this stuff seemed a little bit overwhelming for this simple run and gun shooter type game. So I Actually ended up removing most of that stuff and just got the core game mechanics down to basic player movement, jumping, and shooting. So now that the character controller was improved, as I was playing through the game, I noticed that it was getting old very quickly. That's because that you're basically just going through these linear, semi-randomly generated worlds. I wanted to add an actual objective into the game. I ended up improving the random generation to randomly generate a maze where basically you can kind of go through these stages with branching paths, and then at the end of one of these paths, you'll find a gold helmet based off of the Turbo Mix Games logo, by the way. Once you collect that helmet, you can fight your way back through the stage and bring it back to the start position. Now, once again, this maze breaks up into a bunch of different paths, and at the end of only one of those paths is the gold helmet that you're looking for. However, I still did want to reward the player for reaching the end of another branch on one of the paths. So at the end of all the branches, the player's health is going to get refilled, and that's also going to give the player the option to either get a mystery weapon or purchase a weapon. So anyways, that wraps it up for your boy Johnny Turbo, and I'm going to go ahead and package this project up and send it on to the next developer. Good luck. I feel ridiculous. Hello everyone, my name is Saturn from the Indie Accord. We are a small indie team slash YouTube channel. When I first got the game, I had no idea what to expect. The gist of it seemed to be a procedural FPS featuring Alice in Wonderland with a gun? Our artist Jer took the game first. The coolest part of this game to me was the procedural rooms, but not all of them were finished. So based on the art he saw, he decided to go in a Wonderland cryptic mad direction. Jer overhauled the graphics and did a low poly style to try to unify the art direction and already made assets while maintaining the previous devs art. As I said before, a lot of the rooms were bare and so he created a modular set and added colored lights and post processing to try to make the rooms finished and distinct. We added a couple more rooms like this cotton candy one and this creepy forest one and I got the game next and started working on programming. I like these little dapper gentleman enemies. The AI on them was really complex, but it didn't really come through visually. For example, I thought this enemy was just glitching because I couldn't kill it, but it turns out it was just being healed by a healer who was standing behind him. So to fix this, I added effects like this healing particle system. I also increased the size of a lot of enemies, increased their bullet size, and slowed the bullets down so that you could actually dodge them. At this point, I realized I would need to fix some things, so I decided to speedrun glitch fixing. 
This enemy hitbox. That enemy hitbox. <laughs> that enemy hits. Hicks box. Why is it so hard to say? <laughs> this enemy's health. All enemies AI. Jinky player movement. Wall textures not lining up with wall collisions. Particle system texture alphas. Flip normals. Nav mesh errors. Lightning shadows. Banana physics. Wait, this one's actually important. You cannot mess up the banana physics. All right. Models in the prefabs randomly displacing. Dying too quickly. Tons of new glitches I introduced. And finally, lots and lots and lots of model clipping. I got it all though. Yep. All of it. It's all good. There's no more clipping yeah no there's still a ton of clipping i also had problems getting lost in wonderland but in like a very frustrating way so the last thing i did was add google maps to avoid the player from getting lost or repeating rooms in 100 meters turn left at the cheshire cat if the cat disappears you've gone too far finally our sound designer rabival came up with the track to match the tone of the game with a spark of oddness to it on top of a continuous rhythmic pulse at the very end we thought about adding a boss but we ran out of time, so we just left it. We worked on this game at the exact same time while we were putting the finishing touches on our latest Steam release. It's a monster collecting roguelike JRPG. It's called Monster Path, and it just released. So please check it out. Bye bye All right, guys, I'm talking to you directly now. This is you, the viewer, you and me. We know something that none of the other participants of this challenge know, and that's that there was a little mini... Mini, what, what, like a side quest going on. Remember how I'm a master manipulator? I wanted to see how one audio clip could possibly change the complete outcome of this game. So hopefully, I, like, the plan was to have it be like a robot game. You play as a robot, kill other robots for their oil and stuff like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell is this? Well, uh, too bad. We'll get him next time. Wow, okay, okay. This looks way better than I expected. Like... Look at the environment and the mushrooms on the wall and the cards. Damn, that looks so good. So far, I'm loving the way it feels. Ooh, gosh, this looks way better than when I was developing it. Oh yeah, someone did a really fantastic visual overhaul on this. I love all the cards and the, it's like an Alice in Wonderland type theme almost. here but look at this one. Oh my god and we just found a shop oh that's the revolver right there oh there is a little mini map up top i think that's very helpful for getting lost i think that was one of the problems that i had kind of um came across when i was developing it is is you weren't really always sure where you'd been and everything like that so really cool that they actually got a mini map in there i like that a lot what? The robot sounds are still in it, but we play. What? Does the health go down? I don't think it does. Oh, it does. It's very slow. Okay, hello, fella. The enemies are still pretty basic. I wonder if there's new enemies. Uh, also, my spacebar is broken, so please calm down, okay? Like. All right, got the crown. Bring it home. It's so pretty! <gasps> when I worked on the project, I added a banana. And the only thing I wish and I hope is that they kept it. Please, tell me they kept it. Mystery box! What? Reverse mystery box, there we go. It's only banana. Well, I like banana, so I'll, I'll, I'll take the banana. I was a master at the original banana, but I'll master this one as well. Are you hungry? Yes, you are. Hey, what? That's the crown. Damn. Alright, so I guess we won. Oh no, we have to bring it back to home. Alright, that's cool. I like that. I'm sorry, Jimmy. And back at the start, you just won. Do it again. <laughs> Okay, interesting game. It definitely changed a lot. It changed uh, directions completely after I worked on it. But uh, but we're about to have a meeting about this, so uh, let's check that out. What was your overall like reaction to to seeing the game, especially for the early devs who just begun it? I was not expecting it at all. <laughs> I mean, I was hoping to see some sort of you know fast-paced um, game, but you know, in the end, it was something that I was not expecting. And I really liked it. Not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah for sure, I had the same thing, so the style was 
completely something else that I was expecting it to be at the end. None of you know this, but I guess like I basically planted a sound effect in the game. It was very robotic <laughs> sounding. <laughs> yeah, I wanted so to see it roll into the game being like robotic themed. <laughs> and I opened the game. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I saw, but it was not robots. <laughs> it was completely <laughs> something completely different. Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously, uh, I don't know. I expected the game to remain its kind of fast pace, but it kind of got that removed uh it became more of a treasure hunt kind of game i guess it's kind of what it felt like playing the the last devs were the the team uh from the india court and uh, i'm amazed by what you guys did the changing all the art and stuff like how hard was that our artist got it first and he like cleaned up a lot of stuff before i even took a look at anything like from a gameplay or programming perspective when i got it it had like a strong identity already uh, from from his art and from like the updates he made, I probably messed everything up because I've I've never played a first person shooter before. This is like the first time I played hmm. one or made one. <laughs> so you guys are talking about movement and high speed and all this stuff. I probably uh, am the one who was responsible for some of that. Uh, on top of that, yeah, the code was like a little bit hard to get into, but I did think that the um, it seems to be based on some sort of FPS engine, which was pretty easy to use in general. It was more like connecting things and combining things that so was taking some effort. Now, how about you, Turbo? I, I think in the few past game challenges I took part in, my least favorite role was being the developer in the middle. Just, uh, how was that for you? Yeah, it was definitely a, an interesting spot to be in because like when I got the game, there was already kind of like the core mechanics in place and stuff like that. And like, you know, it felt pretty good to play and stuff, but um i felt like there wasn't really kind of like a point to it almost like you were kind of just like yeah running through the you know randomly generated hallways and it was just kind of like the same thing basically mm. so it's like okay how can i like make this so like the player is kind of doing something that's a little bit interesting so then that's kind of where i came up with the idea of you know making the branching paths and then you kind of do that like treasure hunt where you find the you know crown at the end and then bring it back to the the starting base so uh, i think really like an important question that a lot of people loved from the, the previous video was just asking you like turn by turn what like how you would expand the game uh, from here like if you had to turn into kind of say a commercial game yeah maybe a few months to work on it what would you do I think that kind of the end result of the game seemed a little bit easy like it didn't really feel like the player was in like too much danger so I think like maybe having like some different enemy types just to kind of like make the gameplay a little bit more interesting in that way and just make it a little bit more difficult because again i feel like it was like yeah the player didn't really seem like they were in that much danger in my opinion i was a little sad to see that there were still only four weapons in the game i would have liked to see a couple more mm. uh maybe some like interesting weapons i guess because the ones that were in the game were pretty basic and the banana the banana was cool but uh <laughs> <laughs> the banana was op i don't know I, like it's cool that the um lockdown rooms are kind of two-way right like even when you get the crown you have to go back and you still got to go through all the lockdown rooms but i kind of want to see a version of the game where that doesn't happen so that the player might have to think about maybe leaving some enemies alive in non-lockdown rooms because obviously like the health goes down slowly and then i'd find it interesting if like they find the crown and then they have to absolutely rush back to the start before the health depletes completely what if you had limited time to bring the crown back so you have like two minutes and then you have to get rid of enough enemies in time, you know, hmm. so that when you run back, it's like, you know, not as difficult as, as it could be if uh, you left all the enemies there. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like you could leave some alive so you can uh, regain some health on your way back. So more weapons, more variety in the rooms, uh, maybe like a, a time limit then to again, which again increases difficulty. Yeah, I'd also say if this project were to be expanded in the future, uh, I'd like to see more trees. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love that room. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so yeah. cool. <laughs> We've got loads of crazy videos in the making, including an enormous collaboration between 100 developers who make a video game without communicating. So like and subscribe if you're eager to see that. And remember to check out our course, Game Dev Rocket, if you also want to learn how to make video games. All right, stay tuned. Cheers.